I'm going to show you how to repair a leaking or broken mowing shower faucet. But first, you're going to need some supplies. You're going to need vice grips, needle nose pliers, Phillips head screwdriver, Allen wrench, and of course, the replacement cartridge. So let's get to it. Hello, I'm Derek, and welcome to Hindsight 101, where you'll learn about things that will help you in everyday life. So let's get started with this tutorial. Make sure you have all the tools I previously mentioned. You're also going to want to turn off the water. In some houses, you'll have to turn off the water to the whole house. In others, you can turn off the water just to the bathroom. What you want to do is turn the handle up so you can see the set screw. You're going to want to remove that with an Allen wrench. I had an electronic screwdriver kit laying around, so I use that instead, but it's up to you. Once you remove the set screw, it'll allow you to remove the handle. Now that the handle is removed, you can remove the handle adapter screw, which will allow you to remove the handle adapter. Once you have the adapter removed, then it will display the limiter. The limiter allows you to control the level of hot water. So say you have very hot water in the house and you don't want your children to burn themselves, you can adjust that little white piece so the handle will not turn all the way, exposing the hot water. Once you remove that, you're going to want to remove the metal cylinder. Take note to remember the placement of the cartridge H and C labels. You're going to want to remember this because this is how your hot and cold water is set up. Yours could be different, yours could be at the bottom, but just make sure you remember that for the future. Next you're going to want to remove the faceplate. Not all showers you're going to have to do this, but for mine, in order to access the cartridge retaining clip, I had to remove the faceplate. Now that the faceplate is off, we can remove the retaining clip. You're going to need needle nose pliers for this. You can see that little piece sticking out. It can be a little awkward taking out, so take your time. And this is what it looks like. Now you have a decision to make on how you want to remove the cartridge. You could use the mow and puller on the left or the little white plastic piece on the right. Either one works fine. I like the puller just because it makes the process easier, but you could use a pair of vice grips with the white piece to remove it just as well. If you get the mow and puller, it is another specialized tool only for this project, so keep that in mind. So once you make your decision, let's get to it. So how you want to set this up is you want to look at the puller that middle piece that looks like a nut, you want to turn it so you're exposing the two teeth that I have pointed to with the red arrows. Once you have that, you want to make sure the screw that's at the end is extended out. Now you want to tighten the nut against the cartridge, and then you're going to want to screw that screw all the way in until you feel some resistance. That's going to be screwed into the brass piece that was sticking out of the cartridge. Once this is complete, now the fun begins. You're going to want to take your time and slowly pull out the cartridge, kind of moving the handle back and forth as you're pulling. Be patient, it will come out. And this is what the cartridge looks like if you haven't seen one before. Next, you're going to want to clean the piping in case there's any obstruction or debris in the way. So just to run your finger along the pipe and clear out anything if there is. 
After that, we can install the cartridge. What you want to do to make it easier is you want to lubricate the cartridge. If you lubricate the rubber pieces on the cartridge, it'll make it a lot easier to put the cartridge back in. Once the lubrication is applied, you can put the cartridge back into the piping. As I said before, you're going to want to make sure you put the cartridge in the same way you took it out. You see the H and the C are at the top the same way when you took out the old cartridge. Also note the brass piece in the middle. It has two flat pieces. Those should be horizontal. That's in the on position. The same way you took the handle off was in the on position and you want to make sure you put it back the correct way so it's not backwards. You see those little notches on the top flat piece? That means that's the on position. The bottom piece is smooth. Now that you have the correct positioning, you can put the cartridge back in. In just a few minutes, you'll see I made a small mistake. Right here, I accidentally pushed the brass piece in too far. I should have used the puller and not my hand. Here's a demonstration of my mistake using the old cartridge. You can see the bottom isn't flush. If the bottom isn't flush, that means your faucet will leak. And I accidentally pushed the brass piece out, so that's why it was sticking out. So you want to do is use the puller, and you want to set it all back up, but then that bottom piece that looks like a nut, you want to tighten that up. And as you tighten it, it'll pull that end piece back in to make it flush again. You can see in the video. It's not flush. I start tightening that nut. And then slowly, it'll pull it back in and make it flush so the faucet will not leak. Once you do that, you can put the cartridge back in. Once the cartridge is in properly, you can put the holding pin back in to the cartridge. Take your time. This could be a little tricky. Once this is complete, you can put the faceplate back on. It was easier for me to put both screws in and work it in than do one at a time. Good rule of thumb, you always want to rotate when you're putting the screws back in back and forth, not to tighten one side all the way. Once this is complete, you can put the metal cylinder back on. And I said before, you can put the white limiter. If you want to set that and change it up a bit so there's not so much hot water, you can do that as well. Or you can put it back exactly how it was if you're fine with how much hot water comes out. Next is the handle adapter, along with the handle adapter screw. Make sure that little tab is facing up. So when you put the handle back on, you can put the set screw in there. Once the adapter is on, you can apply the handle and put the set screw back in. Once this is complete, you're going to want to turn the handle down in the off position, and then you can go and turn on the water to the shower. Next, you want to test the water to make sure the hot water comes out when you turn it to hot, and the cold water turns on when you turn it to cold. And that's it. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, you want to make sure it's not leaking too.